There's a record. The record book says the Chicago Cardinals. But who really won it? Well, the people in Pottsville will tell you that the Pottsville Maroons actually won. Okay, on the line right now, the author of the play, Maroons, Ray Sarantini. And by the way, this play, Ray, you can catch it. It's presented by Iron Age Theater at the Center Theater, uh, 208 DeKalb Street, Norristown. Yep. And it's, it's there for most of this month. He's on the line right now, Ray Sarantini. Ray, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, great, guys. How are you doing? I'm fine, Ray. How are you doing? And uh, I, I know I saw the play opened a week ago. Uh, and I saw it got a very nice review in the Inquirer, and it runs through. Uh, give us the date. How how long is the play going to run there? Uh, it runs until the 27th of November, um, Friday and Saturday nights at eight, and Sunday at two. Okay, so uh, you had to be pleased with the review in the Inquirer. It was a very favorable review, and for folks who, you know, who don't really know much about the story, it, it is an interesting story. Uh, I'll let I'll let you kind of tell it. But before there, you know, before the Philadelphia Eagles ever came along. Uh, the, there were a couple pro football teams playing in this area. There were the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets and there were the Pottsville Maroons. And in 1925, the Pottsville Maroons were probably the best team in professional football. Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, they had played in the Anthracite League, which was a semi-professional league for a couple of years. And then in 1925, the owner um, they spent $1,700 uh, to buy into the NFL, which was a... Uh, you know, a new league at the time, but was still a big step up for the Maroons. They were no longer playing teams like, you know, Coldale and Steelton. Uh, they were in the big league. And uh, the play tells the story of that 1925 season, uh, you know, beginning to end. And the rise and fall of the Maroons that year, it's, it's the center of the story. Yeah, I was going to say, what was it that brought you to the story? And uh, for people who don't, who never heard this before, there are actually, and you should be aware of this, there are people that are still in the community of Pottsville that are still fighting to try and get the title restored. I mean, that's, I mean, there's a whole, we're now talking second, third, fourth generation of people up there that had connections to this team that are still fighting with the National Football League to get the title restored. But how did this, how did this story happen to, happen to come to you, Ray? Well, um, I had actually gone out with a girl from Pottsville years ago, and I came across the story then, and it really is, as you suggest, the day before yesterday up there, you walk into a bar and you mention the Maroons, and six people are going to gather around, you're going to have a, an argument. Um, so that the passion of the folks uh, really kind of brought me to the story, and um, I thought about it for years, and it's a challenging story to try to bring to the stage, but uh, was able to, I think, figure it out uh, late last year, early this year, and, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a fun, entertaining, and also a poignant play, uh, even for folks who, who don't usually go to the theater or have never been to the theater. Uh, I did a lot of research, so, uh, you know, all the statistics, all the formations that you hear about, the scores, uh, that's all accurate, and uh, we even run some football plays, or impressions of football plays, you might say, on stage. One of our uh, actors, Luke Moyer, was uh, coach Pop Warner football for a while, so he worked with the director uh, to come up with some formations and, uh, you know, running some plays that uh, people have really been wowed by. Well, let, um, I'll, I'll kind of set it up for you, Ray, and you can, you can kind of finish it off here. But for just for folks who don't know, the Pottsville Maroons, are, it's, it's the precursor of the National Football League. It wasn't called the National Football League then, but, but they finished the year with the best record in the league. Um, they defeat head-to-head -head the, the Chicago Cardinals, who are today's Arizona Cardinals, who, interestingly enough, are coming to Philadelphia this weekend to play the Eagles. It's the same franchise, same family ownership, actually, yeah. of the Cardinals. Uh, they finish with a better record. They beat the Cardinals head-to-head -head in Chicago, uh, but then at the end of the year, uh, they, they, in effect, break what was considered a league rule uh, by playing a game in the territory of the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, and the punishment is they're kicked out of the league, and, and, their, and, their, and, their, and their title is taken away from them and awarded to the Chicago Cardinals. That's it. Yeah, they were playing the Notre Dame All-Stars at, uh, at uh, Shad Park, and... Uh, but it was the Notre Dame team. I mean, it was Newt Rockney's box offense and the Four Horsemen. Uh, so it was the Notre Dame team. Um, and we're not exactly sure. I, I did a good bit of research, and, and we're not exactly sure, you know, what the owner of the Maroons thought he could or couldn't get away with. And uh, the, uh, the rule was sort of an unwritten rule. It was kind of an unwritten gentleman's agreement. So there's a lot of gray area there. Um, and it's interesting, you know, as a dramatist to try to get into that and, and explore motivations and whatnot. Yeah, and well, I guess that that's basically the, that's basically the story. There is is that the Chicago Cardinals were awarded it, and it's been an ongoing debate in that area. And believe me, if you ever go up there, and you're quite right, Ray. If you still if you just mention the Maroons in any casual conversation up in that area, you will get people passionately discussing it and how the city was cheated. And I think you probably know, and you could probably address the fact that just within the last couple of years. 
this case was once again reopened and presented to the NFL owners uh, in an attempt, and, and, and Governor and then Governor Rendell was was in on it, and a lot of politicians were in on it. Actually, made a presentation to the owners to try and get them to restore, if not the entire title, at least a portion of the title, so that the people in Pottsville could claim, yeah, we have a share of an NFL championship. But the, right. league, the league owners talked about it and and voted no. Yeah, so as far as they're concerned, you know, they, they still don't have that title, and it rankles. It really does. Right, great stuff, man. Congratulations on the play. And again, I just want to remind everybody where they can check it out. Iron Age Theater at the Center Theater, 208 DeKalb Street, Norristown, uh, through November 27th. And for more information, go to 610-279-1013 or at I, at, go to ironage at comcast.net. So congratulations on, on all the great reviews, right? Congratulations, right? Well, well done. Best of luck with it. Yeah, that, that's one of those amazing sort of untold Philadelphia area stories. Yeah. I mean, it's not untold, but it's, it's I, obviously I know how long it's been since you know, the time has passed, but they, were, they really got robbed there. They were the best team in the league. The record says that, and the fact they beat the, Card- they beat the Cardinals head-to-head in Chicago and beaten them, and they finished with the best record. But what, but what happened was they, they had an opportunity to play this Notre Dame traveling all-star team and they wanted to play it in a big venue. And the stadium in Chai Park was yeah. bigger than the stadium in Pottsville. So they played it in there, but their territorial rules being what they were, they told them if you play in, in the front of the Yellow Jackets territory, there's going to be a penalty to, attached to it. They thought it would just be paying a fine, yeah. but the commissioner kicked them out of the league and took away their championship. That guy was hardcore. Pretty yeah, hard. you know, that's what that guy, can you imagine what he would do these days? Yeah, Joe Carr. Helmet to helmet contact? <laughs> well, you never play in the league again. All right, we get back. We'll open up the phone lines. We'll begin to whip around as well. Rob Ellis, Ray Dittinger, live from Delaware Park Casino. WIP Sports Time is 11. 